Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and atop the holy hill. O oh God, your praise, like your name, reaches to the earth's farthest end. The city of God has strong foundations. It is a stronghold in time of terror.
was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, Brian and Amy Van Born present their infant son for the sacrament of Christian baptism. Amy and Brian, we remember the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he said that we are to go into all the world and make disciples in all nations, baptizing them in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you, and remember that I am with you till the very end of time. We remember how Jesus took little children in his arms how he laid his hands on their heads and said, Let the little children come to me. Do not try to stop them, for to them also belongs the kingdom of God. Obeying the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, confident of his promises, assured of his presence with us now, we baptize those whom God has called to be his own. In baptism, God puts a sign on us to show us that we belong to him. And by water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the Church of Jesus Christ and called to participate in the ministry of our Lord. Since, as you, the parents of this child, desire the sacrament of baptism on his behalf, I would therefore now ask you with sincerity in your own hearts to give answer to the following questions. Do you acknowledge your child's need of the forgiveness of Jesus Christ? the renewing grace of his Holy Spirit. Do you now claim God's covenant promises on behalf of your child? And do you look to the Lord Jesus Christ for his salvation as you do your own? And do you now unreservedly dedicate this your child to God and promise that in humble reliance upon God's grace that you will endeavor to set before your children a worthy example, that you will pray with and for your children that you will nurture your children in the way of Christ and in the faith of the church. Our Lord Jesus Christ ordered us to teach those who were baptized. Do you, the people of this church, promise to tell its new disciples, Griffin, McVeigh, Van Boren, the good news of the gospel, to help him know all that Christ commands, and by your fellowship, to strengthen his family ties with the household of God. The congregation will respond by saying, we do. We do. Let us share together in prayer. Griffin, McBain, Van Boren, child of the covenant, I now baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Living, live unto the Lord, dying, die unto the Lord. Living or dying, be the Lord forevermore. For in the goodness of God you have been born. In the providence of God you will be kept all the day long. 
love of God fully revealed in Jesus Christ, you are redeemed. Amen. This child, Griffin, is now received into the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God has revealed such a great love for us that we should all be called the children of God. Let us share together in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the gift of this precious child. Keep him always in your love and guide him as he grows in faith, that he might become a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Bless him with good health, a sound mind, and a compassionate heart. But bless him even more with a Christ-like spirit. Inspire him to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you all of his days. Give Amy and Brian the capacity to love Griffin with your kind of love. Give them the wisdom and patience to guide him in the way of Jesus Christ and in the faith of the church. For we ask this.
and good morning. Our scripture lesson for this day is from Jeremiah. Be patient with me. These are thin pages. And uh, first of all, let us have our prayer for illumination, and then I will read to you the scripture verses in Jeremiah 23 and 24. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them. Read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now verses 23 and uh, 24, chapter 9. Thus says the Lord, Do not let the, bo the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth. But let those who boast, boast in this, that they understand and know me, that I am the Lord. I act with steadfast love, justice, and the righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, says the Lord. Thanks be to God. morning, our New Testament lesson comes to us from the second chapter of our first Peter. I begin to read with the 13th verse using Eugene Peterson's fresh contemporary translation of the Bible. Make the master proud of you by being good citizens. Respect the authorities, whatever their level. They are God's servants for keeping order. It is God's will that by doing good, you might silence the ignorance of the foolish. Exercise your freedom by serving God, not by breaking the rules or as a cover-up for evil. Treat everyone you meet with respect and dignity. Love your spiritual family, revere God, and always respect the government. This is the word of the Lord. Let us share together in prayer. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this message would be your living word to us. To that end, pour through me now the gift of preaching, that we might not only hear your word, but heed your word. For we pray with anticipation in the strong name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Years ago, when this country was being ripped apart by divisions over our involvement in the Vietnam War, a bumper sticker appeared and became rather popular. It said, America, love it or leave it. I hated that bumper sticker because the sentiment which were, was expressed in those words was opposed to our cherished ideal of freedom of expression. But if I could create a bumper sticker of my own today, it would carry an altogether different sentiment. It would say, America, love it or lose it. Edmund Burke once said, to make us love our country, our country ought to be lovely. 
despite the recent revelations of what took place in that prison in uh, Iraq and which have deepened, saddened all of us in this country, our country is nevertheless lovely, which is why we love it and are willing to serve it and, if necessary, to die for it. It is because we love it and because we want other people to love it as well that we dare to speak to affirm the righteousness and the goodness that is in it as well as the virtue and the power of its core values. And to speak against all those things in the life of the nation that do this nation harm and that undercut those core values. Now, I personally happen to believe that we are in grave danger of losing the kind of godly character upon which this nation was founded. And if we lost that, we would lose this nation which we so dearly love. Understand me, please, I do not believe that we are in danger of losing America to some outside uh, demonic force. Even in the light of the devastating and heartbreaking tragedies of 9-11, I do not think that is our basic problem. If every violent dictator, every corrupt government, and every terrorist organization were suddenly removed from the face of this earth, we would still have uh, our worst enemies with us. You see, I think Abraham Lincoln was right when he said that if America is ever destroyed, it will be because of the enemies within us. Our worst enemies are a deepening unconcern for the sacred, a subtle disregard for the law, a growing insensitivity to the needs of the poor, the hungry, and the homeless, a lack of profound gratitude for the blessings of life in this nation, a rise in organized crime and drug addiction, and an increasing breakdown in uh, the sanctity of marriage and the family. Patrick Henry's noble cry, give me liberty or give me death, has been shortened to just give me. People are saying, don't fist me in. No rules, no restrictions, no boundaries, no discipline, forgetting that freedom is not the license to do as we please, but the liberty to do as we ought. We are fast becoming a nation where anything goes, oblivious to the fact that in a nation where anything goes, soon everything is gone. These are the enemies that we must confront and overcome if our nation is to survive and be lovely, if our nation is to be compassionate and great. Please hear me correctly. I am not advocating a mindless return to the old-fashioned ways of doing things. Instead, I am asking us to regenerate the kind of faith in God and the kind of love for this nation's ideals which our forebears possessed when they founded this country. I'm calling on us to make this country what God delights in 
and what I believe God desires for us to be and do. I'm encouraging us to, to love America now before we lose it. Yes, I'm pleading with us to make America beautiful. Here is what I mean. I am calling on us to renew our belief in the capacity of the individual under God. Peter, in his first letter, calls us to that kind of understanding when he writes, it is God's will that by doing right, you should silence the fool, fool, foolishness of the ignorant of the the ignorance of the foolishness of the foolish. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil or for irresponsibility. The individual living under God has enormous capability to change the world and to make a difference. We see that truth clearly confirmed in the Bible. Abraham was alone in Cana. Joseph was alone in an Egyptian dungeon. Moses was alone in the desert. Ruth was alone in Moab. Jesus was alone in the wilderness. In each case, God vested great power in the lives of individuals who were willing to be available and accessible to God. And we see that truth also confirmed in our nation's history. Think of those individuals who first signed the Declaration of, Individu of Independence. What kind of people were these patriots? 24 of them were lawyers and jurists. Eleven uh, were merchants, nine were farmers, and one was a preacher. They were just ordinary citizens who knew that by signing this document, declaring their freedom under God, they were putting at risk all they had, even their own lives. And so it was. Five of them were captured by the British and tortured to death, Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Four had sons who were captured or killed by the British. And nine of them who fought and eventually died from their wounds or hardships as a result of that Revolutionary War. Such were the sacrifices of those who lived at the time of the American Revolution. They were not wild-eyed, rabble-rousing ruffians. They were soft-spoken, ordinary citizens who believed that under God, they were called to stand for freedom and righteousness. While it cost them dearly, their willingness to sacrifice for principles greater than themselves gave the world a free and independent America and gave us precious liberties that we dare not ever take for granted. If you believe, as I believe, in the capacity of an individual under God to make a difference, then you cannot despair of America, not for a single moment. Let's do everything we possibly can to make America beautiful. Also, I'm calling upon us today to renew our belief that we can be both good Christians and good citizens Peter writes, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to the authority of every human institution. In other words, respect the government and be good citizens. Combine Peter's words with passages from Deuteronomy, the Psalms, and Romans, and various parts of the Gospels, and the message is crystal clear. There are two kingdoms 
the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this earth. As Christians, we have a dual citizenship. Our first obligation is always to the kingdom of God and our second obligation is to the nation of which we are a part. To fail in either obligation is a sin against Almighty God. Translated into action, that means that we must all be willing to live out day by day the responsibilities which we have in our dual citizenship. It means that we must be praying and working and struggling to complete the yet unfinished American Revolution and to be instruments for bringing peace and justice to this world. It means that we must continually be addressing pressing problems and needs in our society. The needs of the poor, the uneducated, the disabled, the incarcerated, the homeless, the addicted, the oppressed, and the alienated, and we must apply both our Christian faith and our Christian resources towards solving those needs. It means that we must demand the highest ethical and moral standards of our civic and political leaders, as well as of our business and religious leaders. It means, as the prophet Jeremiah suggested in our Old Testament lesson of the morning, that if we are to be people who boast about anything, we must boast of, take pride in, and responsibility for the very things that God values, that God loves, that God delights in. And what are those things? Here they are right here in the ninth chapter of Jeremiah. But let him who boasts, boasts about this, that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Why should God ever bless America if America does not bless the very things that God delights in? If we do not delight in the things that God delights in, why should the Lord ever delight in us? So my friends, the summons is clear. We are called to live humbly and simply, to serve unselfishly and compassionately, and to avoid any national arrogance or pride which blemishes the character and soul of this nation under God. My heart is in America because I believe that we are truly blessed in this land which the Lord our God has given us, and America is in my heart so I cannot despair of this land, but instead work to do my part to make it what God wants it to be. It seems to me that for all of us as Christians living in this beloved land, that no one of us can do less. So I challenge each of you this morning to do your part in making America beautiful. Beautiful not just for spacious skies and for amber waves of grain, but for shining ideals and noble values and strength of character and spirit. Beautiful not just for fruited plains and purple mountains majesty, but for truth and justice shouted from the housetops and for integrity and goodness held high. 
beautiful not just for pilgrims' feet and heroes proved, but for people of every race, class, nation, color, and circumstance, standing tall and walking without fear or prejudice or discrimination. Beautiful not just for patriots' dreams and alabaster cities gleaming, but for homes and for hearts where peace and love, hope and joy prevail. Yes, let's all work together to do what we can to make America beautiful. For I believe that God stands willing and ready to lead this great nation into a bright tomorrow. There is in London, England, a white marble statue of a British nurse which stands above Trafalgar Square. It is the statue of nurse Edith Cavell, one of the few women heroes of the First World War who was executed by the Germans in Belgium even though she continually reached out to minister to wounded German soldiers. Her last moments, her final words, were described in this account by one of the eyewitnesses to her death. After receiving the sacrament of the Lord's Supper and within minutes, of being led out to her own death, she said, standing as I do in the view of God and eternity, I realize that patriotism is not enough. I must have no hatred or bitterness towards anyone. On the base of her London statue are carved the words, patriotism is not enough. My friends, if we wish to be on God's side, then we would do well to remember our text of the morning, from the prophet Jeremiah. For God's values are very clear, and so ought our values to be. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom. Let not the strong man boast of his strength. Let not the rich man ever boast of his riches, but let him who boasts, boasts about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord your God, who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the land, for in these things I delight, says the Lord. If you love the Lord, I mean if you really love the Lord, then you will love those things that the Lord delights in. There is simply no other way around it. Oh God, we give you thanks today for our nation and its heritage of freedom. Give us tough minds, open hearts, and strong wills for the works of freedom. 
that we not only preserve but enhance and extend the precious heritage we have received. For we ask this in Christ's name. Please be seated. As we prepare to come to God in prayer, in a time of word and thoughts and music, I would have you keep these people in your prayers this week. Lillian Fuller remains in the intensive care unit at Rex Hospital this morning. Uh, Louise Farr went into Rex on Thursday for some tests. She's still there. In rehab from broken bones, Jewel Korn is at Rex Convalescent, and Clarence Frizzell is at Mayview. Uh, James Peacock is at uh, Duke Health Raleigh Hospital this morning. Uh, he uh, had uh, some kidney surgery. Uh, he is Kim's husband, a uh, member of the uh, Ed Greer class. And we had some folks in the church who lost loved ones uh, since we last gathered. Earl Enzor's mother died, Elizabeth Melton. Uh, Lewis Mayhew's grandmother, Mary Wright Boone, and Debbie Crutchfield's father, uh, Kelly Yao, has died. Let us come to God in prayer. Great God, what a privilege to have awakened this morning in a country where we are free. 
free to worship anywhere we please, as often as we may, free to earn an income, to have money for our daily bread, and to invest in this church, to build a worshipful place, to fund ministries that share the message of love and freedom with others. We're free to make up our own minds about your matters of faith, to disagree and dissent. We are free to speak out about what we believe and voice our opinions to those who make the laws and administer them. What precious freedoms, dear Lord. Ours because we were blessed to be born in a land where these freedoms were purchased at a great and noble price and then paid for again and again. May we never take them for granted. May we never think this is our birthright, something owed to us, something to lord over others. May we never shirk the responsibility that comes with the rights, the responsibility to be active citizens, to speak out whenever people are oppressed, denied equal opportunity, living in poverty, as our mission team saw, or in terror or disease. May our actions always be those of good citizens and good Christians who act on their beliefs, sound beliefs based upon your word revealed to us in Scripture, the sure knowledge that you are the God of justice and compassion, steadfast love for all. We pray this morning for the leaders of the Presbyterian Church USA as they have gathered in Richmond this week to seek your guidance as we continue to strive to apply your eternal word to the changing world in which we live. Lord, in the words of James Johnson's hymn, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who hast by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path, we pray, lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee, lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee, shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand, true to our God, true to our native land. Let us continue in prayer. We welcome all who are worshiping with us today, and we invite you to sign the friendship pad as it comes down the row so we can learn your name and refresh ourselves on our neighbor's names. If you're a first-time visitor, there's a red ribbon in one of the little cards in the pew uh, rack there. If you would put that on, we can definitely give you the official uh, right hand of fellowship and a warm welcome to this warm and inviting church. If you're looking for a church home, this would be a great one. Uh, we're on the, the cusp of great things. This is uh, Layton's last Sunday with us. But uh, things can only even get even better as we have a, a new minister coming in August, Ed McLeod, who we've heard great things about. Uh, a lot from Casey Crawley, who's from his home church, and he used to work with him. Uh, but Leighton will be back. Don't forget, put on your calendar March, the all-church retreat. Uh, Leighton will be the, the speaker in, in March. So if you haven't uh, 
giving him a word of appreciation. He will be at the, uh, the door after the service. And uh, the elder, elders will be in the parlor if you indeed are looking to l learn more about our church at this time in our life. I see some of our mission folks made it back from the, uh, the mission trip. A uh, little bleary-eyed. They got in late last night, but they saw amazing natural wonders and some uh, stark uh, living conditions that I'm sure will change them forever. Look forward to hearing their uh, after-action report on that. Also remind you, look on the calendar on the back of the bulletin, the Lord's Supper. That sacrament will be celebrated next Sunday. All are invited to participate in that at both services, 8.30 and 11. And I thought this might be a good time to also remind you that we're a Stephen Ministry congregation. The little cards in the pew, if you're looking for somebody to just come listen to you, if you're in a time of crux in your life, a fork in the road, and if you wonder what a Stephen minister looks like, Griffin's mommy is one. <laughs> Amy Van Voren is one of our newest Stephen ministers who... Uh, and if she can, uh, you know, be a good parent to four children, certainly she could be a good Stephen minister to you. So if you need uh, some help, uh, just fill out that card and turn it in and seal it, and it'll be confidential. This time, let us return to God uh, our, the worship of our offering and tithes.
steadfast love for all. In Christ's name. fellowship in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us and all those whom we love wherever they may be. <laughs> 